everyone, it's Alex, and today I wanted to talk about what's probably my favorite theme in literature, which is loneliness. So I know the world right now is like pretty crazy with how we're not only trying to maintain like our resources, but also our sense of connectivity. And I knew it was only a matter of time before Olivia Lang crawled out of whatever academic essay she was currently writing to shed some light on the concept of loneliness. She wrote an opinion piece in the New York Times earlier this week, which was basically a comprehensive view of basically what her book is about, which is The Lonely City, The Adventures and the Art of Being Alone, which is a book I really like. This is a work of nonfiction and and I first read it in 2017 whenever it came out and I really like to reread it all the time because I feel like it changes my reading experience based on how my perception of loneliness changes too. It's not even really a book that tries to have you stay away from loneliness but it helps you kind of recontextualize how loneliness fits and different forms of media. Lang interchangeably talks about different artists very academically I would say but she takes what she learns from researching them and applies it to her own life as she's living in New York City. Her sense of discovery is often through demonstration based on how she can sort of test her own visual capacity to identify loneliness. But what's always interested me is the loneliness of the characters we read about in fiction, mainly because I feel like reading is the perfect medium to thematically attest to loneliness. Often the characters we read about are our sole inventory of all the emotions they feel, which could possibly make them feel more alone. And really with just like the narration and being so much inside of their own head, it's simultaneously intimate and helps with progression of the book, but it also can sort of feel very confrontational. And for me, definitely, I think this sort of leads to a common thing I do whenever I may realize how I project myself onto the characters I read about and how my conception of loneliness is based on the imaginary, trying to articulate that visual capacity that I think Lang is doing through artist that I'm trying to do through stories and storytelling. One book I think about with loneliness is Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger, and I think this is a perfect way of describing self-isolation and loneliness as a form of punishment. Our main character, Holden Caulfield, embraces his own loneliness because he thinks it's to equate to his loss of innocence as he's going through his adolescence. He begins to shed the conventions of what people might most expect of him by beginning to ditch school and dodge any sense of supervision from adults. And he also really loves to analyze cuss words. What clings him to this feeling of being responsible for loneliness is by trying to protect his younger sister, Phoebe, and retain her own innocence. I think all all of this takes on a really redemptive quality to loneliness and me being 14 years old reading this book for the very first time I thought was really relatable to me. Reading this book for the very first time whenever I was so young made me really rationalize loneliness as a more mature concept where it made me feel so naive and made me feel so far away from ever possibly thinking that I would be able to experience that for the first time anytime soon. On the basis of wondering if loneliness is something you understand the older you get, I wanted to also talk about The Pisces by Melissa Broder. I think this book gets shrugged off a lot as being completely wild, because it is. I think it has this unique restraint about how our main character Lucy simultaneously feels that her loneliness is literal and imaginary. Lucy's concern boils down to how she can self-actualize her romantic relationships without self-sabotaging herself. And a part of that process begins whenever she meets a mysterious man on the beach one night. What's always fascinated me about this book is how Lucy's sense of loneliness is so dependent on how well people around her believe her about her romantic love life. And I think this opens some good cultural criticism about how we may shy away from giving sympathy to people that we may wonder if they even deserve to feel lonely whenever they might be so well off. In Lucy's case, she's currently escaping a PhD program just because she doesn't really want to attend anymore and she has a very secure place where she can momentarily stay. So in some ways she is privileged, but I think the whole concept isn't try isn't to try like 
berating someone for how they feel, but trying to understand why they feel so strongly in the first place. And for Lucy, I think it's a matter of her recurring battles of trying to justify her sense of intimacy and how she misinterprets it for the physical versus the non-physical, often measured by distance. I just really find Lucy's journey fascinating. I think she's still one of the most memorable characters I've read in fiction. And I think really the book could even extend to talking about that sense again of the physical versus non-physical. Relationships can exist, especially ones like being online and saying that you know people, but then we always use this distinction of in real life. This book isn't about like online relationships at all or anything. I think I'm really just reaching, but I think it really can serve those parallels for how comfortable we are to make that transition of like early 2000s of everyone on the internet is a creep. But now more than ever I would say the internet is this very resourceful tool of connection and really blurring the line between physical and non-physical spaces. I feel like I could go on and on with more books about loneliness, but the last one I want to talk about is Severance by Ling Ma. You knew this book probably had to be coming because you've probably been seeing it everywhere online as book companies try to capitalize off the coronavirus. You might see this book described as a satire, which I certainly think it is, but for me it's kind of like a bait and switch, as the book brings up a very real and very serious issue that's non-satirical about how often Asian Americans can feel like they're already living in this dystopia of being either too American or not Asian enough. This is a story about Candace Shen, an Asian American girl living in New York City working in publishing. Eventually the world falls into a pandemic where it causes people to really blur the line between understanding if their daily lives are defined by their work or the very next day realizing that they've fallen prey to the virus. And Candace realizes that she's one of the very few people left to be able to go into work, which is truly the most Asian American thing I've ever heard. Candace's choices in her profession professional pursuits have always been interesting to me too because of outside of publishing she also has a strong interest in photography. Both professions are one that I think are actually also so compensatory. They bring the payoff of the product versus any artistic authenticity. So again while this fits into the capitalistic satire theme I also think it's really interesting that Candace has these hobbies that easily fall into trapping her into these feelings that I feel like myself being Asian American sort of fall under. And that's mainly to appease to the collectivist versus individualistic societies that really distinguish the East from the West. And to me it's really Candace's way of being so unfazy to the apocalypse that really shows that in some ways Asian Americans always have to live with these internal apocalypses all the time. Often plagued by recurring Asian identity touchstones like burden, expectation, and restraint versus American ideologies like independence, collaboration, and vulnerability. To me Candace's loneliness has always been a depiction of how well prepared she is because if anything during an apocalypse it's people really testing or wondering about how prepared they are. And I think between all these characters I think it's really just a matter of trying to have them realize what their limitations to loneliness are. And now more than ever with the coronavirus spreading, I think it's really people wondering sort of their endurance with things like self-isolation and possibly loneliness. And it's a humbling reminder that because of spaces like booktube, I feel really grateful that this exists. If you have any go-to books about loneliness, I would love to know what they are. I'd probably love to read them as soon as I'm done playing Animal Crossing. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.